What's going on YouTube? My name is Trey Kepsel and this is Elk Motorsports. Today's video was motivated for two reasons. First reason, I just got done welding the driver's side reinforced transfer case mount from Zoots Off-Road. And two, I've seen a lot of discussion on Facebook and other social media platforms about guys wanting to start getting into welding and wanting to know what a good starting welder would be to work on the Samurai and other automotive related things. So it just kind of motivated me to show y'all the welder I picked and the reasons why I chose it. So here it is guys, it's the Hobart Handler 140. Now I wanna let you guys know that it did take me a while to pull the trigger to actually buy this welding machine. I got it from Northern Tools and it's a $500 welder. And I don't know about you, but for me, $500 is a lot of money to invest in a single particular tool. I knew I needed a welding machine, and I knew that I wanted to go MIG. I'd actually learned how to MIG in an auto body shop, so I already knew how to do it and how to use it. I wasn't as fluent with all the different parts and all the different settings and what you needed to buy. I've actually got a buddy, Shane, who is a welder, who helped me pick this machine you know, this Hobart is actually a rebranded Miller. It's a Millermatic 140. Um, it has the industry standard 531 warranty, and it's a very quality welder. I will tell you that it is not the best bang for your buck welder, but I'm gonna tell you what influenced my decision on why I picked this welder and some of the features that it offers. One of the biggest things that I took into consideration whenever I got this welder was the type of power source that it requires. I didn't know how easy it was to wire up house wiring, so I didn't know that you could just wire up your own 230 volt. So this machine is a 115 volt, which is a standard three prong house outlet. So every garage pretty much has at least one house outlet. The only thing that would keep you from doing a 230 volt plug is that you need at least two breaker slots to put a 50 amp breaker in. If you don't have access to that and you don't want to spend a lot of money to contact your electric company and a professional electrician to come out and run more power from the pole, this might be your only option. The cost to actually upgrade the wiring in your house might not be beneficial if you're not going to really use this machine a lot. So with that being said, the duty cycle for this machine, which is important in a welder, but I didn't let it influence my decision too much, is 20% duty cycle at 90 amps. Now, that duty cycle is on the low scale. It isn't for a 115 volt plug. And what that means is that in a 10 minute time frame, at two minutes of straight welding, at 90 amps, you have to let this machine cool down for eight minutes. Now that might seem like not a lot of welding time for a lot of downtime on this machine, but you have to think that it is two minutes of straight welding. This welding machine welds in the range of 24 gauge to quarter inch plate. If you weld for two minutes on any of those metal thicknesses, you are gonna distort that metal. It's gonna be about as straight as a witch's broomstick. So you're gonna to have to take your time. You're gonna to have to weld a little bit, let the part cool down, which will be your downtime for the welding machine, and then weld some more farther away from that spot, so on and so forth. So that's really not a big deal with a machine this light duty. So inside this welding machine, inside the case, you have your chart that'll give you all of your different metals, that you can weld, you can weld steel, stainless, and aluminum. All your gas is required and your metal thicknesses and your settings as far as amperage and wire speed. And the wire speed is just like a base setting. You can fine tune that knob and you can adjust that. Down here, the actual hub assembly that holds the spool on, this is a 10 pound spool. You can use 
the little bitty spools too. This uh, hub piece right here will actually unbolt and you can slide this on, which is really nice. Over here, you have the drive assembly. It's actually made out of metal, not plastic, which is really nice. That's an upgraded feature they offered. Down here, this little knob, you can actually adjust for your corresponding thickness of wire. The actual wire thickness I'm using is .024 which is smaller than what comes with it. It comes with this flux core wire that's .030. And I do that because the voltage setting on this machine is a lot lower, so I use thinner diameter wire, and uh, that's something that my buddy Shane told me to do. I never actually experimented with the different wire sizes, and it was a really good fit for this machine. You can also adjust the preload on these rollers with this knob right here, which, brings me to the other point as far as different types of wire i said that you can weld aluminum with this machine one of the biggest problems is the aluminum wire with the pre-tension on this machine tends to crush that wire and distort it so when it comes out the end of the gun it'll be flattened out a little bit and it won't want to come out it'll kind of skip a little bit which is also something that this adjustment does you will actually get that same skipping effect with regular wire if you don't have the tension set high enough it'll actually kind of just come out intermittently and it won't give you a nice consistency you pull the trigger you can actually set it too high too so that's a little fine adjustment that you do i have it set a little bit above three that's the inside of this machine so like i said this machine is actually a rebranded miller so there's a lot of parts that come on it that are miller part numbers this MIG gun is actually a Miller part number. <clears throat> so you can actually replace it with Miller parts. One of the things that I do not like about this particular welding machine is that this cable for the MIG gun is only 10 feet long. I've already run into issues where it's not long enough and I'll have to readjust and maneuver the machine around if I'm trying to weld around a part, which is kind of annoying. The Grounding cable is also only 10 feet long, which I haven't had an issue with it being short at all. The actual parts of this MIG gun, inside this cable, there's a liner. It's actually like a wound up coil spring that's got no gaps, it's butted up. That's what allows the wire to feed through and allows this to be flexible. Now it's only flexible to a degree. You can kink it. You don't want to because that'll obstruct the liner and make the wire inside get hung up. Uh, at the end, you have a gas nozzle, which is removable, and you have a contact tip. Now, this contact tip is pretty much what directs the wire. So, this liner is a is larger diameter on the inside than the tip of this contact tip. So that way the wire can move and it has the freedom to move around. You have to have a contact tip because if you don't, the wire will just shoot out in any direction and not consistently point where you want it to. So you have to have a contact tip. Now generally you get a contact tip that's correspondent to your wire size. Like this is a .030, which is 3 hundredths of an inch. You usually would use that with a 3 hundredths of an inch diameter wire. Well, I told you that I'm using 0.024 inch diameter wire. Well, they don't make a contact tip that size. They make a contact tip that is 0 0.023, and they have a corresponding wire size for that. But you can use a diameter tip that is larger. Obviously, you can't use a contact tip that's got a smaller diameter. The wire won't feed through it. This gas nozzle directs the gas flow to your weld to remove any impurities in the atmosphere around your welding area. That contact tip that actually comes with this welding machine actually is branded Miller. I'll show you a picture of it. Another thing that comes with this welding machine is a gas regulator which on the back side is actually branded Miller which is really nice. They didn't even waste their time rebranding it with a Hobart stamp. Let you run shielding gas, which I've kind of messed with the flux core wire and I don't like it personally. I just run with the shielding gas. It makes a lot more consistent welds, a lot cleaner, 
a lot more aesthetically pleasing. The flux core wire does have a place in the field. If you were toting this machine, which is only 58 pounds, you could use it mobily out in the field and you're out outside and it's windy. If you're trying to run shielding gas, the wind is gonna blow the shielding gas away from where you're welding, so you wouldn't be able to use the shielding gas. You would have to use flux core. Besides the fact that you're trying to like lug a cylinder around with your welding machine and all of this gear, it's not really feasible. Now the front of this machine is real simple. It's only got two knobs and one switch. The top knob controls your wire speed, which you fine tune for your style of welding, the thickness, the amperage, all these other factors. The bottom knob actually controls your amperage setting, which is one through five, lowest being 25, highest being 140. You have an on and off switch, and then you have an over temperature gauge, which will indicate whether or not you hit the duty cycle. And like I said before, with this machine, I've never run into an issue hitting the duty cycle. It's a really, really good machine. Very good for what its intended purpose is and for what I've used it for. Great machine, especially at the price point. Some of the other things that I purchased while I was at Northern Tools with this machine was I got a pair of pliers. They're actually welding pliers. They are particular by design. They have these little hammer ends, which are nice for like knocking off pellets and BBs. You can use this end of the needle nose. It's actually got a really sharp edge so you can run it along the metal to knock BBs off. The needle nose portion, you can grab the wire and you can pull it. If it welds itself to the contact tip, you can kind of strike it and you can grab it and pull it off. This small little circle is actually the same diameter as a contact tip, so you can unscrew and tighten the contact tip on the end of the mid gun. And these cutter portion is actually got a recessed portion. You can actually go in the end of the mid gun butt it up against there and cut the wire and it will be the appropriate length that it needs to be, which is really nice. I also got this nozzle gel, which serves two functions. Whenever you're welding and it gets warm, you will actually dip this MIG gun into the nozzle gel. That will lubricate the contact tip for the wire to come in and out and it will also put a little coating that helps prevent that wire from welding itself to the contact tip and whenever you need to clean up this gas nozzle, it makes all the slag and BBs not really stick, so it's really easy to clean up. Highly advise getting this. I also got a Hobart auto dimming helmet from Northern Tools. This auto dimming helmet, I really didn't mess with any of the settings on it. It came out of the box, ready to go, had a battery in it, everything. It comes with a replacement outside lens and inner lens and inside it actually has all your settings that you can adjust and it has your timer on the outside for when it kicks on. Really nice welding helmet. It was $100 but an auto dimmer is, I advise investing in one of those for sure. And as far as gloves go, I use TIG gloves. They do have MIG gloves, are a little bit thicker. I like to use these because they offer far more dexterity. They're not as thick. It does get warmer while you're welding so you need to be conscious of that. So before I said that I didn't feel that this machine was the best bang for your buck, and that's because of a multitude of factors. The machine that I feel is the best bang for your buck is the Hobart Handler 190. Now it is a 230 volt only machine. You get a couple of things with that welder. One of the biggest things is you get a 30% duty cycle at 130 amps. It also allows you to weld from 24 gauge to 5 16 which is a lot higher range in one pass. The other thing that that machine comes with at Northern Tools is a spool gun. So right off the bat, it comes with that spool gun to run aluminum wire, which is really nice because that in itself is a $200 value that this machine can't even take. So you get that. That's something that I know that Northern Tools offers. For the increase in price, I think it's only $200 more for that machine. So you get the better duty cycle, you get the, the greater thickness of material that you can weld, and you get a spool gun, all of which is worth $200 more. Only downside is it's a 230 volt only machine. So like I said, if you're limited on your access to power in your garage, 
that's the only real limiting factor. And if I could do it all over again, that's the machine I would buy. Not saying that this machine, the value and all the features it has isn't worth it. I wouldn't go and buy the Hobart Handler 190 and keep this machine. I don't even think that I would try to sell this machine and buy that machine. I personally would just get a TIG machine. I could weld aluminum and stainless and everything else and keep this machine too. This is an awesome machine. It is welded everything I've thrown at it. It hasn't come near the duty cycle. It is just a phenomenal machine. I really like it. But if you have access to 230, or you know how to wire it up yourself, or you're kind of in the realm of you don't know what you want to buy, and you think, for an instance, you know, I don't mind investing in a 230 volt and I'm gonna weld over quarter inch, I would go with the Hobart Handler 190. Well guys, that does it for this video. I hope that this helped answer any questions or concerns that some of you might have about picking a welder, or if you're deciding to get into welding, what type of machine that you should look at. If this was content that you enjoyed watching, be sure to hit like, and if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe so that way you can stay up to date on what I've got going on in the shop. YouTube also has a little bell icon feature that if you click, it'll notify you every time I upload a video. Be sure to click that too. And I'll catch y'all in the next one. Peace.